it is Thursday, the 11th of August, 2022. Left the campsite um, and we have just driven a five minute drive down to Dunkeld because my nan and granddad came here back in the 60s or whenever it was and they took a picture of themselves um, at the bridge here which I've got so I'm going to try and recreate this picture just up ahead. Here is the bridge just up ahead of us. What's oh the River Tay, it's over the River Tay. Isn't it a Thomas Telford Bridge? It's a Thomas Telford Bridge, ah. Right, they were standing somewhere here and the camera was looking this way at them so okay i think i managed to uh, recreate the vid the photo i think i managed to match up some like bits of um lichen and things missing in the stonework i think i've done it we've done it anyway Let me turn you around to see the River Tay on the other side. There you go. Right, apparently there is a, I think he said a cathedral. Did he say a cathedral? Oh, he's all the way down there now. Look at all these uh, old lamps. Obviously been modernised, but I'm assuming they used to be gas. So, my mum and dad, nan and granddad, and I think there was another relative in the 60s, did a car touring holiday and they just used to just find bed and breakfasts and stuff. And they came here, obviously. Oh, shame the cathedral's closed. Uh, Cathedral gates are cast in 1730 for the entrance to the demolished Dunkeld house and repositioned here in 1832. All oh, right, there's a Dunkeld heritage walk. Hmm. Shame. And there's like blue plaques all along here. The old rectory, originally a manse, oh, that is. and Dunkeld's oldest living house in there. Uh, number 23, original Cathedral Dean's House, survival, survived in the 1689 Battle of Dunkeld. Uh, there's another one down here. <laughs> number 19, Cathedral Street, original manse for the Cathedral Treasurer, survived damage by the Parliamentary Troops in 1654. The buildings gained the Salt Hire Society Award for reconstruction in 1958. Okay. Uh, number nine, childhood home of Alexander Mackenzie, 1822 to 1892, the first Liberal Prime Minister of Canada, 1873 to 1880. Ooh, another plaque there, didn't see that one. Water wind, that one says. Monks pulled their ferry boats up here from the River Tay. Ah. There we go. Is that it? They've all got these um, little plaques above the doorways, NTS, and all that means. And then we 
can't. <laughs> A big thingy. So that's Cathedral Street, and then we got of course blue plaques over there as well. Oh my goodness! We got uh, this one here. A plaque. So it says Duchess Anne and Duchess of Arthur. At all founded the girls' school within this building in 1851. And this is 11 the cross, one of 17 little houses in Dunkeld, Dunkeld restored by the National Trust for Scotland in 1956 to 1965. St. Ninian's Wind. St Ninian was an influential Scottish saint around 50, sorry, around 500 AD, but unlikely he visited Dunkel in person. Okay. That's the pub, the Perth Arms, oldest trading pub, first opened in August 1795 by the local merchant John Proudfoot. There we go. Did I see another one? There's one well, Dunkel well, Dunkel Hotel. And there is another blue plaque, but there's quite it's a The Royal Hotel, on. constructed in 1815, ballroom added in 1835. Visitors included Queen Victoria and exiled, exiled Maharaja of the Punjab. So there you go. Ooh, let's go. And we're parked here. Okay, we've come to Falkland Palace. Car parking. Well, cars are all right, but anything bigger is a bit rubbish. We've taken up two spaces there in a free car park. So I hope we don't get done for it. You right? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the palace. No, was it? Were we? Is it a palace? Falcon palace. Yeah. It doesn't open until eleven, and it's ten. Ten. Okay. There's some a lot of old houses here. Okay, there's some old houses here. So let's have a look. Cottage Craft Centre. What? Coat of arms. Oh, yeah, I don't think you can see it. It's Smee's house. I don't like filming it. It's a coat of arms above that house, anyway. First, oh, that's, that's different, isn't it? First World War, remember. Do you know what that means? Going inside? No. Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is the Falkland Palace. It's not open yet. This is it from its the outside. There's gardens. The gardens. Is, where's the gate? Yeah. Oh yeah, there are gardens. So we'll have a look. The gate is open. Opening times Thursday. There we go. Okay, so we've come. The gate is open, but it's not open. I don't know if we're allowed in there. Oh, they look. Uh, I don't know if you can see those thingies. There's some crowns on top, not that you can see. Okay, you're not allowed to film anywhere inside because it's still sort of privately owned and stuff like that. So I sort of got. I didn't get told off, but. Um, I couldn't do it, so... Mm. 
and there's a buddleia, which is, if you want to attract butterflies, is really good for butterflies. There's two peacocks on it there. Red Admiral there, which, you, oh, up there, up there, which I know you can't see, but it's just loads. There were loads of butterflies. You scared them. I scared them off of my face. We've just had a red squirrel dive across this path. Came out, looked because we were right there. Came out, saw us, and then dived to that corner, and then dived out there. And there's a bottom of that tree. Oh, yeah, not that you can see. There is a tree somewhere there. Now nah, he's gone up it. And he hasn't got his big camera handy. Yeah. So what is this bit in here? It's the viewing area for the tennis court. Right? Viewing area, oh yeah, there's meshy things there, but not, I'm not that interested in the tennis court. All along here, woo, this one just flew past me, are swallows nesting, and then below each nest are little trays. <laughs> That's so funny. There's one up there feeding. Coming down. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, let's go to the studio. Um, right, so that's that's the tennis courts. Yeah, let's go to the garden. It's more interesting. Ross, uh, we parked down there, right in close to the wall. It's very narrow roads further down. So we've come to, is it Cole Ross Abbey? We've done the Abbey first, yes. Why, what else is there? The village. Ooh, we're doing the Abbey first and the village, apparently. The Abbey is up this hill. Okay. <laughs> I think there's sort of read a 
Um, I didn't notice saying it was uh, closed, but it's not by the looks of it. Cole Ross Abbey. the remains of a stone cross from the 8th or 9th century. Okay, so these are little people down here. Um, so it's Sir, Ro Sir George Bruce of Carnac, his lady, his three sons and five daughters in this tomb was provided by George Bruce of Carnock, his yes. eldest son, right. She's got half her head missing, and that one's got no face. Yeah. Okay, I can't really read it, it's all in weirdy writing, but there's no information I could find anything in the information bit of this abbey. So I don't know. Uh, here, in sure hope of a blessed resurrection, are deposited the remains of Elizabeth, the wife of Sir Robert Preston um, of Valley Field. Here also are deposited the remains of Sir Robert Preston of Valley Field. Can't quite read that because it's behind this table. Okay, so this coffin was removed from underneath the presbytery in 1905 and they don't know who was uh, buried in there. but fences and stuff so you can't actually come in the way we came so we came in through there so you have to go back out onto the road again these pillars
Thomas Cochran, GCB, Admiral of the Fleet. Tenth Earl of Dundonald, 1775 to 1860. Naval commander, international statesman, radical and inventor, I think that says. Here we go. January House, no idea. And lots of very old houses and buildings and stuff. Okay. Coal Rose Palace and Gardens. There, didn't we? And looked down did. and came somewhere. Didn't realise it was uh, here. Right, this is North Wing entrance. Okay, so we've been pronouncing it as Kulros, but it's actually pronounced Kuros. Kuros. <laughs>
Hello, it's Friday the 12th of August 2022. Um, bit of a disastrous day, nothing to do with Colin, just we had planned, because we're on the way home, sort of, um, we had plans to call in at Stone in Staffordshire where we used to um, pick up canal boats and go on holiday on canal boats and it's a really nice little town. So we had planned to go there but we hit traffic jam after traffic jam. Yes. Where was that from? That was basically from Preston all the way to Stoke-on-Trent. So we it, and it's such a hot day as well it's like we would have been arriving there at what two o'clock yeah and it's like well that's that's gone then hasn't it so that's two years running now we haven't called in at stem yeah, it's supposed to be in a four hour trip it took us over six. Um, so yeah. anyway um yeah so we have finished our scotland holiday um we didn't get to sky we were going to go to sky but ooh, no. a couple of buzzards up there um yeah. But that was last weekend, wasn't it? Um, yeah. But Colin's brake pad things just messed all that up, didn't it? It did. We lost four days, really, didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't it's know. It's always next year. Always next year. Um, but we've had a really nice time, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. So, we will be driving, black, driving back to Plymouth tomorrow. Why are we driving back to Plymouth tomorrow, not Sunday? I'd just like a day off on Sunday to relax before I go back to work on Monday, if that's okay. No, that's not the reason, is it? Well, I might be going to Argyle tomorrow afternoon. Flipping Argyle. Well, you missed two games. Can't miss no, it's just annoying. It's not. It is. Anyway, so we shall see you soon. Next weekend, possibly. Probably next weekend. But yeah, the last couple of days have been so hot. Uh, we passed a couple of fires, didn't we? We think. We did. Um, grass fires and stuff. Big one yesterday. Yeah.